So, today I would like to talk a little bit about how to build this geodesic dome. It's based on planks, on boards, on kind of boards which allow you to have very thick walls to put insulation in. But it's quite tricky to build. Here we see an octahedron. Usually they're built out of icosahedrons. So we see some struts already. Here I'm starting by taking the octahedron and I first make a copy with the move tool. And on the red line you will see a C point which I did using the power bar up there, C, C point to vertex it's called, and I just put it on the origin. Now I'm starting off with some guidelines, which is uh, fairly straightforward. Next step should be to make um, the triangle into a component but it looks like I skipped that, skip, that, that step for now. And, but that's no problem. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get it eventually. Um, okay, I, I really hope that uh, everything goes well with um, the audio. Huh. Um, so actually I made the side first into, um, into a group and I'm going to regret later on that I made them into groups instead of components. Groups are really the lazy way because the uh, dialog box is easier. So first step would be to make those sides really and then you put them into components, all these uh, sides of an upside down pyramid. It's really an, an upside down pyramid if, if you if you look at it. So what you want to do then if you have each side into one component, you want to think about your planks. And of course you know when you start cutting what dimensions you have. Because I'm in love with the idea of thick uh, thick walls. I'm going to use six by twos and really acidome is good for thick walls. That's the biggest advantage and why not use it? It gives you stability and it gives you enough room for insulation. Thick walls is really what makes acidome superior to the beveled frame method. So what I want to do here is I want to put each face of my upside down pyramid into a group or component. Ideally, if you're not lazy like me, you will put it into a component because components allow you to change um, many objects at the same time later because really um, our, there's a lot of red struts in our model and then there's a lot of um, other struts that repeat themselves and if you don't make components you will have to uh, manually change each instance of your strut uh, by hand which is obviously not good but I actually here I make this mistake in this video I didn't do it on purpose it was just laziness but you'll see why it's bad okay so after you've done the sides which are six centimeters uh, th uh, uh, thick you will do uh, you will push them in two centimeters and but they but before you push them in you um, open your group or component because you don't want the elements to merge and become sticky. Stickiness causes a lot of troubles. 
Okay, here I did the outside, and now I'm going to push it in two centimeters. So here is where the GHS power bar plugin comes into play. First, I'm going to open the group, and I'm going to trace lines where my strut is intersecting with the other strut. Oh, here I clicked something wrong. So I'm going to have to find all the surfaces that intersect um, with the strut um, that is not opened. Oh, it's not a strut. It's a plank. Sorry. So up there, I need to link those two points. And on the... On the on the other side, down there, I still have to trace a line down there. And this is not how it works. Oh, this time it worked. Magic. Usually you have to trace two lines. You have to extend um, an edge to get it right. Okay. So here comes the GHS power, power bar tool. Move verte vertex. I'm going to just move vertexes, vertices here. So the upper two, I've done them. I've moved them to the right spot. And now come the lower ones. They're quite difficult. So I have to activate X-ray mode to be able to see where I want to push, uh, where I want to push, push my vertices. So here you can see how I traced the vertical line already. It's on the outside of the strut you can almost not see. And I'm missing one line here. I'm going to draw it. And now I'm going to see. I think it's very obviously and obvious and you can't see it. So now I'm going to push in those vertices. Instead of deleting them with the delete tool, I'm pushing them in. And actually, there's a problem happening. The line, the diagonal line, will cause trouble for me later. And I will regret not having used components. But this happens all the time in SketchUp and should teach you that you should use components. I just haven't learned my lesson yet. So here it dawns on me that I'm dealing with an equilateral triangle. And instead of doing it all individually, I can simply rotate them around. But in order to rotate them, I will first have to define a custom axis. And you can already see it. It's the center of my equ equilateral triangle. And... I define, I first start with that center point, hold it down and drag it to my C point, which is really the center of the uh, octahedron. And then I find the right spot, which can be tricky, and push times two times two. Here it goes. And now I'm done and I'm going to check if it rotated correctly. It looks good. Let's zoom in a little bit. See every here we can see the di the diagonal line again. Uh, that will cause trouble later on and I, I noticed it way too late. But by the time I will notice it, it will already be too late. So here would be a good moment to make it into a component. And I didn't. I left it as groups, make, made it in a, into a bigger group. And now I'm going to move it back into my original phase. And then it occurs to me that I have all the triangles that I need that I need for my octahedron. So I go back to my other file where I modeled the top part, the 
light blue triangle here. So now what I do is I lock the blue axis and I'm going to rotate the top triangle around four times by move copying the blue triangle and then hitting times three or um, really times two. Uh, times, times three, I meant. And that'll give me a total of four triangles, as you can see here. I deleted the faces, so you can see what's going on. And now I still need to fill in those gaps down there, and it happens. Um, and in the top triangle just so also happens to fit in there. So I'm going to rotate, copy it like so. Okay. Good, but um, if I really wanna, wanted to know if the measurements of the calculator are correct, I need to design them based on the diagram and um, then put them, try to put them into this perfect structure here. So I'm gonna simulate uh, a reverse engineered triangle that's not aligned anyhow um, by just moving it out of the structure and turning it around a little bit. So here I'm trying to roughly rotate it so I can put it back into the structure, which is what I will do um, with, with struts of of which I don't know whether or not they will fit in the structure so perfectly. I already know that the angles that are shown on the diagram are correct, but do the angles really speak the truth? That we don't know yet. So here, this is, as you can see, it's not easy, but here um, we can again use the GHS power bar and it has some nice uh, um, plugin that helps you align um, objects in 3D. Just go counterclockwise and again counterclockwise all the points. Uh, here I have to, here I can see my, verte my vertex and I have to activate face mode, which is a nice little trick you run into this problem. However, mm, did it really work out here is the question. It looks good. It's, it appears that it worked. If it doesn't work, then there are still the Fredo tools. Fredo has a similar plugin that's just, uh, it, it's doing the exact same thing. So here um, I realize that I'm missing a triangle, probably because I hit times two and not times three, as I said I did, but really didn't. So now I'm trying to fill in the missing gaps by rotating triangles around. And here I, it, I realize that I should have put them into components because one strut is missing a face. And I've rotated the struts around many times. I have made many copies. And now I would have to fix each one individually. If I had put this in a component and simply and simply um, copy the component, I wouldn't have this mess. So this is a real life example by um, Andy Candes. And I would like to thank him for motivating me to do this because the structure is really super interesting for yours.